All right, evidence of a chemical change lab. So vinegar or baking soda. At station one, I observed, so we observed beakers of vinegar and baking soda and an Erlenmeyer flask. That's what we observed. What happens when we mix the baking soda with vinegar? Well, let's find out. But first, let's take our infrared thermometer and see what the temperature, our starting temperature of vinegar is going to be. And we're just gonna add all of it. Okay, so let's switch it to Celsius because there's no Fahrenheit in here. So we're at 24.6 degrees Celsius to start with. Now, let's add our baking soda. Let's add a lot. All right, here we go. All right, take the temperature again. Oh, look at that. So now we're at 23.7. So we had a temperature change. We started at over 24, and we went down to 23. Plus, we have these wonderful bubbles. So what we observed, let's write down what we just observed. Okay, so after mixing baking soda and vinegar, we saw gas in the form of bubbles and a temperature drop. Was there a temperature change? Oh, not in the bag. That was from last year. Yes, the temperature dropped. This is an endothermic reaction. Okay, so that's endothermic. Would you expect a temperature change when combining these substances? And explain um, yes or no. Explain the why between your yes or no. So if it's yes, tell me why it's yes. If it was no, tell me why. Personally, the first time I saw this, it would have been no. I would not expect two substances that are at room temperature to get colder when we mix them. Now is a new substance produced? Well, did we see any of our indicators of a chemical change? And here are the indicators. Odor, light, color change, gas, temperature going up or down, and a precipitate. Did we see any of these? Well yeah, we saw the bubbles and we did see a temperature change. We saw the temperature go down. So if we saw any of these indicators, that means we had a chemical change. And if there was a chemical change, what you're seeing in that flask is no longer just vinegar. It has formed something new. So yes, we do have a new substance. So yes, when we see an indicator of a chemical change, we have a new substance. Our indicators for this one were gas and a temperature drop. All right, let's go to station two with the vinegar and the milk. Okay, at station two, I observed beakers of milk and vinegar and a test tube that's in a test tube rack. So that's what I wrote down. Describe the properties of milk and vinegar. Well, properties are, how would you describe this to somebody who's probably, who's not looking at it? How do we describe milk? So for milk, I said it's liquid, it's white, for vinegar, vinegar is also a liquid, but it's clear. And these are our qualitative properties that describe it, but we can't really put that on a graph because there's no numbers. Okay, then we go to the next size. What happens when the two liquids are combined? Okay, so what we've done is I've put some vinegar in the test tube, and now I'm gonna take a pipette of milk and I'm just gonna drip some in there. Oops. Alright, so after adding the milk, this is what we're seeing. Stop, phone, focus. <laughs> Why does it never focus on what I wanted to focus on? There we go. 
So you can see that there's like a solid in there. And some of it has settled to the bottom. That's cool. Oops. Seeing the other parts of the lab. Focus. I don't know why it doesn't focus. I'll put it back down. Okay, so that's what we're seeing. Which one of these is that? Well, that is our precipitate, right? We have our solid pieces that are at the bottom. Okay, so after mixing the milk and vinegar, we saw a precipitate. Is there a new substance produced? Yes, a new substance was produced because the precipitate is an indicator of a chemical change. And when we have a chemical change, we have a new substance. Can we return the clear vinegar and white mil milk back to their original form? No. Chemical changes generally cannot be undone unless we have another chemical change. So for our purposes and right now, if we have a chemical change, no, we cannot undo it. Okay. So no, a chemical change cannot be undone without another chemical change or chemical reaction usually. All right, let's go to the cabbage juice, lemon juice cleaner. All right, at station three, I observed beakers of lemon juice, cabbage juice, and cleaner. Um, those of you that did the lab, you also had test tubes, but we are gonna do this on a large scale, because I can. So what are the colors of the cabbage juice and lemon juice before combining them? Yellow and purple. What happens when the cabbage juice combines with the lemon juice? Let's find out. Oh, it is pink. Very nice. Very nice pink. Kind of looks orange in the video, but it's like fuchsia. It's beautiful, but I don't know how to spell fuchsia, so I'm going to say it turned pink. The juice turned pink. The juice turned pink. Would you expect purple and yellow to produce pink? No, I would not, although I am not an art person, so I don't know if you like combine yellow and purple crayons if that makes pink, but I wouldn't think that it would. All right, what are the colors of the cabbage juice and cleaner? Well, cabbage juice is still purple, cleaner is clear. All right, then it asks, what happens when these two are combined? Let's... Find out. Ooh. Greeny turquoise. That is just beautiful. So what happened is that the juice turned green, or the liquid turned green, because it's not, it's not juice. Don't drink that. Would I expect purple and clear to produce green? <laughs> no. I totally would not expect that, ever. All right, what evidence indicates that a chemical change has occurred here. Well, I think that is pretty darn obvious. Color change! Okay, so the amazing color changes indicated that a chemical change occurred. All right, station four, iodine and a cracker and a napkin. All right, at station four, I observed tissue, cracker, and iodine. Tissue, cracker, iodine with a pipette. All right. What color is the iodine on the white napkin? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. All right. White napkin, iodine. It's the black spot. The black spot of death for pirates. It kind of looks like it. All right. Looks like it is a, like a dark brown and a black in the center. Crazy. All right. Then it says, what color is the iodine on the saltine cracker? Let's try it and get it in that hole. Oh. See, now that looks like it's right out of Stranger Things. Black and evil. So iodine and crackers make evil. Evil, black spot of death. All right. So, let's answer these questions. Black and black. What evidence indicated the chemical change? The fact that they both are black. This one is also a little brown. I'm sure that's because of an art thing. 
So the color change indicated that a chemical change has occurred. All right, apples. All right, at station five, I observed a cut up apple with a knife. So then what we're gonna do says, describe the piece of apple that is newly cut from the apple. This apple, this part, I cut this this morning at like 7.15. It is now 4.45, so that is a long time. Nine and a, half, nine and a half hours, something like that. So it's been cut for nine and a half hours. Now let's cut a new piece. See, we had it all, all day. I said, don't throw it away, guys. I need to keep it all day. Let's cut that off. All right, so here's our newly cut slice. You can see that it looks juicy. It is a nice, I don't even know what color to call that, an apple-y color. Does that work? Apple-y? I'm going to say yes, it does. That is a nice, beautiful, juicy, apple-y color there. Anybody would be happy to eat that, except I know that students have been touching it all day, so I wouldn't. All right, so this piece looks juicy. There's no eye there. And fresh, a nice apple-y. How do you guys think we should spell that? A-P-P, -P, what do you think? That's no <laughs> Apple <laughs> That's totally wrong, but we're just gonna go with it. It's a nice apple -y color. If you have a better spelling, let me know so I can improve that. Describe the piece of apple that was pre-cut. So it's really nice because we can compare them. You can see that wow, I almost fell. This one is it's yellowing and browning and along, it does not look really juicy anymore. That juiciness is from this part that dripped. So it's dry and starting to curl in on the sides where the, the skin meets the flesh of the apple. It's brown, it's, it's gross. Gross looking, this is the kind of apple that you just don't eat. So the pre-cut piece is brown, dirty, and overall just gross. Okay, turning that over. What evidence indicated that a chemical change occurred? Well, I think that would be that color change, again. Okay. So the color change indicates a chemical. I did not see that there was a circle there, so that's why the chemical looks weird. Change occurred. What caused the chemical change to occur? Well, remember, it's just been out all day in the open air. So let's say air, okay. So being exposed to the air caused the change through the process called oxidation. Can you think of other fruits or vegetables that experience this type of chemical change? Um, well, avocados, pears, bananas, probably a lot of other ones. All right, station six, the effervescent tablet, AKA, oh no, sound like Mr. Bowman, Never mind. All right, at station six, I observed a large Erlen Erlenmeyer flask and antacid tablets, one and two. What happens to the tablets? Well, they're gonna go in here, and I'm gonna do two just because I didn't wanna leave one in the thing. So here we go. Plunk. All right. Definitely see one of our indicators. There it is. Very nice. So what's happening is that it's looking like, there we go. They are dissolving. I guess I'll just try and write while I'm holding that. Oh, they're gone. So what happened to the tablets? The tablets dissolved in the water. What evidence indicates a chemical change occurred? The production of gas. Oop, that's an O. Oh, goodness. Or bubbles. Indicated. A chemical change. E, D. All right, is that, that is totally it. That one's for Thursday. The end.